welcome to Make It With Miss Mandy. Today we are going to be putting together this 3D mid-century inspired house. This was a really fun project to design and it's really pretty simple to put together. So I'm excited to get started and show you how to do it. So gather up your supplies, head on over to designsbymissmandy.com to download your free template and let's get started. The supplies you'll need for this project are cardstock, about seven sheets in various colors, vellum, hot glue, precision craft glue or a glue stick, a cutting machine or X-Acto knife, and my template which can be found at designsbymissmandy.com. Other optional but helpful supplies include foam tape and a bone folder. If you need help figuring out how to set up the file that includes score lines, be sure to check out the tutorial I made on the subject. All of my pieces are cut out now and as you can tell I'm going for a slightly different color scheme on this one with the orange house. I think it'll be kind of fun. Alright, so I'm going to set aside most of these. And we're just going to start with this front wall here along with this which is going to be the right side wall and then the top portion of the house and then these decorative pieces so the door the light the windows which are made out of vellum and then the window frames so I'm going to start layering these on and you can probably kind of see where these are going to go but these little rectangles are going to go over these windows here and then this window piece is what's going to line it from behind. This window is going to go behind this part right here and this is the window frame for the outside. These door pieces layer together and will go here and there is a little cut in here so that this door can open like that and then these two light pieces will layer together and it will hang just above the door Now that we've got these pieces done, I'm going to set this one aside for now. I'm going to take this one, the back side, these pieces, and then this side piece. What we're going to do is we're going to start attaching these uh, beam structures. I'm going to attach this one um, so you can see that there's like a score line right here. It's kind of hard to see on camera. I'm going to line it up so that this tab is just on the inside of this wall and that the base is lined up together like that. I'm going to do the same thing with this one on this side. And then I'm going to take these little pieces. These are going to be little beams that go across the carport. So I did it a little bit differently on this one and the beams are just connected directly to the wall uh, like this. Sorry, I'm trying to get on camera, there we go. Um, and I changed up the design just a little bit to make it a little bit cleaner. I added these little slits. Here, let's see if I can widen these so you can see it a little bit better. There are a few little slits like right here where these beams can go in and they have once again these tiny little tabs on the end where these, these can slip inside, that one's upside down, there we go. These can slip inside, you can fold the tabs over and then attach it like that. So it looks like it's just coming directly out of the wall now instead of um, being attached with the tab on the outside where you can see it. So I'm going to attach all of these and attach these two things.
Now that these are all attached, um, I'm going to set aside the back piece for now and we're going to start attaching the walls to the front of the house. So this is going to fold like so and then this shorter piece is going to be this side wall. This is going to go over the top of the house and then this is going to be the other side. I'm going to attach like so. So I'm just going to fold along all of the score lines and start attaching my tabs along the perimeter. Now with all of these walls attached to the front, we can attach the back side. Now that the structure is almost finished, the next thing we're going to focus on is the roof. This is the roof piece. And what we're going to do is fold along all of these score lines and then attach these little tabs to the sides to make it into kind of a box shape. And it's going to overhang on the sides of the roof just a little bit. And I can show you on the other one what I mean. So you can see that there's a little bit of a gap on each side. Um, and that is why it's going to overhang. And then obviously there's these decorative diamond shapes in the top so that the color from this piece can show through. So here's the finished roof piece. And as you can see, there's a little slit right here in the back. This is eventually going to be where the chimney is going to poke through. And so just make sure that this is on the back side and that it's not being covered up um, by this piece. So just be careful and just uh, flip this over to make it easier to line everything up. And we're just going to glue this like so. Now that that's in place, we can add our chimney, which is just this little rectangular strip. This is going to slide through this um, slit in the roof, and then it's just going to attach to the back side of the house. Now with the house assembled, the next thing we're going to do is turn our attention to the base, which is going to be this green piece along with some little decorative pieces. And these are just going to attach on the little sides. So we have a couple of long pieces that will go here and here, and a couple of shorter pieces that will go here and here. With the decorative pieces attached, the next thing we're going to do is fold along the score lines so that all of the little side pieces go inward and then take these little tabs and attach them together to form the base. Now that the base is done, I can start attaching the house structure using the slits provided and I'm just going to widen these. And then we can slip everything in.
Now this is attached to the base, I am just going to tack down these tabs with some hot glue. Now that that's attached, I can attach my decorative fence piece over here into these two slits in the base. And then I'm going to work on attaching these little beams one at a time. And if you, if you look here, you can see that the design is a little bit, has a little bit thicker of a band right here. That's so that you can attach these beams to it um, and keep them somewhat hidden. With those attached, the only thing left to do is add our finishing touches. And for this design, we have a few little plants and some pots to put them in. So I'm just gonna start gluing these together. With all of these assembled, I'm ready to start putting them all around my house. I'm just going to attach them with a little bit of foam tape to give them added dimension. Congratulations on completing this cute mid-century house paper craft. Thanks for watching this video and for crafting along with me. I hope you had a good time making this project. Don't forget, I always love to see your finished results, so be sure to share them with me on Instagram, tagging at Designs by Miss M. And special thanks to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I couldn't do what I do without your support. If you enjoyed this paper craft, please consider becoming a supporter. Not only will you help keep the designs coming, but you can also have a chance to help pick new designs in the future. As a patron, you can even get awesome exclusive content like postcards and enamel pins in the mail. Thanks again for watching and happy crafting!